Hey guys, so for those of you that don't know, we are currently in Melbourne. We've been here for the last nine or ten days and we've been exploring the city, the suburbs around it and I thought I'd do a quick video just to give you our opinions, our recommendations so that if any of you ever come to Melbourne, this might help you out and help you plan your trip. So first of all, when you land at Melbourne Airport, first thing you've got to do is figure out where you're going and how you're going to get there. So for us, we needed to get to the train station and the easiest way to do that was to take the Sky Bus. This is right outside the airport as soon as you get there. You can book it in advance or like we did, we turned up, there was no queue. It was uh, 19 Australian dollars per person. You get straight on the bus and it takes you straight to the train station. It was really quick. We were on a bus within five, ten minutes and it was exactly what we needed. The Sky Bus took us into Southern Cross Station, which is one of the main stations that we've used the whole time that we've been here. It's a really good central point to base yourself from when you're travelling around the city. When you get to Southern Cross Station, there's places to eat, there's shops, so you know if you just got off a long flight, you'll be able to find something there. What I'd recommend firstly is going to the transport hub there and picking up one of these Melbourne leaflets. Now in here it's got loads of information on the back, but the main thing is the map of the city. So this has everything on it. So it's got the city centre, it's got all of the free tram routes, all of the train routes, and it's got a big version and a smaller version that shows you more. And we've used this throughout our whole trip literally every day, so it's so worth having. Another thing you'll need to do when you get to Southern Cross Station is to buy a MyKey card. And this is what you'll need to get around the city if you don't have a car. So this is sort of England's equivalent to an Oyster card. You tap on as you get on the train, you tap up to get off and that's how you get around. You do the same with the trams and you just top this up like you would an Oyster card. So you can go into the train station, I think it was $6 to buy the actual card and then you top up money onto it and we've used this again every single day which has been great. The transport in Melbourne's really good overall, I think it's really well priced, the trains are always on time, always regular and in the centre of the city all the trams that you can get around are all free and as you get further and further out of the city you start to pay but it means that you can travel around the whole city for free most of the Time, which is great if you're on a budget. If you're ever confused about where you're going, which tram or train to be getting on, there's always transport people around that are really helpful. Just go and ask them. We've done it quite a few times and they're a great help, so use them. So for the last week and a half that we've been in Melbourne, we've been staying in an Airbnb in the Footscray area. If you look at the map of Melbourne, that's just on the left-hand side and it's about three or four stops into the centre of Melbourne and takes probably 10 to 15 minutes. There's a train station literally at the end of our road, so it's been brilliant to get in and around the city and the suburbs. Footscray is an area, it's very Asian dominated, so if you go into the town of Footscray, there's loads of restaurants, loads of shops, so if you're into Asian food, you'll absolutely love it. As a place for me, Footscray is probably the most run down area that we've visited. I wouldn't say I'd feel the safest walking around in the evenings or if I was on my own but it's great transport wise so it's been good for us. While we've been here we've visited nearly everywhere in the Melbourne area which is great so I thought it'd be best to tell you our sort of top five recommendations of places that we think would be great for you to visit. Firstly is the Botanical Gardens and the Shrine of Remembrance. So this is quite central to Melbourne City. You can either walk from the train station to the Botanical Gardens or you can get a tram it's really big, there's loads of different areas to it, so you could spend a day wandering around. I'd recommend taking a picnic, and you can find yourself a nice spot to eat, which is what we did. There's a lake that you can go punting on, there's cafes, and it's a great place for a walk in the sun. Just outside the Botanical Gardens is the Shrine of Remembrance. Now, war memorials aren't exactly my thing, but I would definitely recommend going and having a walk around the building. It's beautiful, you can go up to the top and there's the best view of the city. On the other side of the Botanical Gardens is the sort of sports precinct, so there's 
the cricket ground, there's the Olympic stuff, so if you're into sports that's worth a walk around as well. The next place I'd recommend going was probably my favourite street in Melbourne. It's in the Fitzroy area and it's called Brunswick Street. It's a really, really long street, looks sort of run down when you first get there, but as you get further and further down the street, there's amazing delis, cafes and bars with people eating out on the street, there's great second hand shops and boutiques and sort of alternative clothing, there was loads of vegan and veggie cafes if you're into that sort of thing and it was just nice to walk down the street and have a different set of shops rather than your normal high street shops. So if you're into something slightly different that you wouldn't find on the high street, I definitely recommend Brunswick Street. My next recommendation is the South Melbourne Market. Now, a lot of people will visit the Queen Victoria Market while we're here, and that's the market that we did first. But after visiting the South Melbourne Market, I'd actually recommend that one over the Victoria Market. It's full of amazing places to eat, little restaurants, market stalls, you can find any food you like there. And there was great places to buy meats, cheese, bread, the fresh seafood looked amazing, the fruit and veg was actually much better than at the other market. So I definitely recommend getting the tram up there and having a walk around the streets. My next recommendation is slightly out of the city centre, so that is Yarraville and Williamstown. So this is on the side of Melbourne that we're staying on and it's just a few train stops. Yarraville is just one small street but it's full of beautiful bakeries, flower shops, fruit and veg shops, cafes. We ate at an amazing cafe called Willis and Anderson, I had an amazing brunch so I definitely recommend that. And then if you get on the train and have a few more stops down, you'll get to a place called Williamstown. This has got a lovely beach and two little coves called the Jawbone Reserve which is where we went and we literally had a cove to ourselves so I definitely recommend that. You can also do a walk from the beach round the edge of the island and up into the town and there you can find the yacht club, there's also the sailing club there and again streets with just places to get ice creams, cakes, eat, have a walk around and it just had a really nice feel to it and better than the other seaside towns that we'd visited. My last recommendation would be Albert Park. Now this is slightly outside of the city centre, again we got the tram there. It's a huge park with a big lake in between it. Uh, as you walk around there's places where you can stop and barbecue for free. There's also a lot of the Olympic and Paralympic training grounds there, so there's an aquatic centre, the rowing centres there, the football clubs there, so there's a lot to see as you walk around and sometimes it's nice to get out of the busyness of the centre of the town and get out and have a bit of peace because Melbourne's actually got a lot of greenery in it, lots of parks, lots of lakes, so it's nice that if you've had a day in the city to go out and maybe have some lunch or have a walk around somewhere a bit quieter. One of the great things about all of these recommendations is they're all free, you don't have to pay to get into any of them and obviously you can spend as much money as you want when you're there but we did a lot of them and just walked around for free and took our own food with us. If you want to know our opinion or recommendations on any of the other places that we visited that I haven't mentioned then just pop a comment below and if you want to see more of what we got up to then check out our vlogs.